Ready to go? Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the San Diego Hall of Champions. Uh, thank you for being here today. My name is Chuck Menke. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for USA Triathlon. Uh, we have a few short videos to show you today, so we'd like to kick things off with the video right now. On September 25th, 1974, the world's first ever triathlon was held right here in San Diego, Fiesta Island to be specific. Uh, just 38 years later, uh, the sport is already moving towards its fourth Olympic Summer Games in London. Uh, in that time, the Olympic movement has so ingrained itself in the fabric of the sport that the second most commonly run distance is actually called the Olympic distance. Uh, and so it represents a homecoming of sorts, uh, the only U.S. Olympic qualifier to be held on U.S. soil prior to London uh, is coming to the official birthplace and, uh, dare say, mecca for the sport here in San Diego, California. Uh, Mission Beach, to be specific, uh, right next to Fiesta Island. Uh, the 2012 ITU World Travel on San Diego uh, event will take place May 10th to the 12th and feature 130 of the world's top men's and women's uh, triathletes, as well as more than 2,000 age group triathletes racing essentially at the same venue. Uh, as those who will be competing in London. Uh, here to tell us more about this landmark event, I'd like to introduce, starting to my immediate left, USA Triathlon CEO, Bob Rebecca, uh, U.S. national team member and Olympic hopeful, Matt Charbot, uh, San Diego Sports Commission President, Al Kidd, and at the end, two-time Ironman champion and class of 2012 USA Triathlon Hall of Fame inductee, Scott Tinley. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, before we start uh, with some opening comments from each of the speakers on the dais and then open it up to questions, I'd like to mention that we're honored to have uh, several local youth triathletes here from the Triathlon Club of San Diego. Um, they will be, as well as their coaches, they, they are here to perform a brief demonstration of a, a triathlon transition following the press conference, so I hope everybody sticks around for that. It should, uh, should be fun. Um, I'd like to thank Club President Thomas Johnson and Vice President John Hill for their help in organizing the local support and participation for this event. So thank you guys. Uh, organizers of the event, Lagadere Unlimited and USA Triathlon, would like to thank and give special recognition to global partners Dextro Energy, Samsung, Sunto, Skins, Specialized Oakley, DB Schenker, and Level 3 Communications. Level 3 is also a partner of the San Diego event, along with Tier Sport and All Whites Egg Whites. Uh, utmost appreciation is also extended to the city of San Diego. Uh, local communities such as Mission Beach and La Jolla, uh, the San Diego Sports Commission, and the Triathlon Club of San Diego again. Uh, we're also proud to announce that both the elite uh, races will be televised on Universal Sports. There's a press release in your press case, so I would encourage you to, uh, to check that out for more information. Uh, finally, uh, lunch will be available after today's press conference, including special muffins courtesy of our new sponsor, All Whites. And by special, I mean they have egg whites in them. Don't read into that. <laughs> so without any further ado, uh, I'd like to turn it over to our speakers, starting with Rob. Thanks, Chuck. Is the microphone on? Should be good? Okay. First of all, I'm honored really for two reasons. One is uh, uh, being up here on the dais with the esteemed colleagues. Now we're better? Okay. 
Uh, Chuck gave some introduction to this play. I just want to say a couple things about each of the gentlemen to my left. Immediately, Nat Schauber, who we'll hear from in a few minutes, this guy is one gutsy racer. I mean, there's, there's triathletes that are out there that, you know, put on a hard effort. Matt's a guy that leaves it all on the race course. I'll be excited to see Matt race here in six weeks' time. Uh, Al Kidd, who has been a pleasure to work with. We've, uh, we've had a long time coming to finally get to this point. Uh, I feel over time this Centennial community has been largely underserved from high-end Racing, the San Diego Tri Club is the largest tri club in the world, built with 3,000 members, and we're very proud to bring high this. Okay, this is. I'm on now, right? Okay, it's much better. Sorry about that. Rob, can you say the ball out again, please? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, finally, the, Scott Tinley. And Scott um, certainly has inspired a lot of people, it inspired me personally in the 80s uh, when he was winning Ironmans. And, racing successfully around the world and was happy to read his articles over the last 25 years or so in triathlon magazines, books, and you'll, you'll hear from each of those. The second reason we am honored is that you know, this is a pilgrimage. It's a pilgrimage to Mecca in a way, as Chuck alluded to. This is the birthplace of the sport going back almost 30 years ago. And for us to actually have a course that starts near Fiesta Island in the first place of the sport is pretty magical. You know, there's a lot of the word epic is probably overused in endurance sports. You know, it's typically used for longer distance races, an Ironman race, which is a 2.4 ocean swim, 112 mile bicycle, and 26 mile marathon. But this race that we're going to have is clearly deserving of the word epic because the race on the Olympic qualifying side is different than an age group race. It's pack racing, it's draft legal racing. You'll see the Tour de France. You'll see laps. It's very spectator friendly. Typically, triathlons are more participatory driven, not spectators. Not the case for the Olympic race. So the women's race, which is Friday afternoon, the, the men's race, which may be on Saturday afternoon, I would encourage everybody to, to see. It is the effort it is so intense, I can describe it as violent. The transitions, when they come off the water with their bikes, I mean, it's, it's chaos, but it's, it's art all at the same time. I mean, athleticism, these guys are world class in all three sports. The swim is full contact, the pipe is tight, packed style racing, and the run is completely all out, red line, full way. Now, the age groupers, not quite like that. You know, the age groupers, really the course is designed, accessible to anybody, and we think it's a very good course in swimming in Mission Bay and to ride a nice climb, but we do feel it's available for those triathletes maybe you're only doing one race a year. If you're doing one race a year, this is your race. So we, we hope to see, I wish all of our 400,000 members could be here to race in six weeks' time, but unfortunately we only have room for, you know, uh, 2,500 or 3,000. And so hopefully those of you that are out there thinking about this race and haven't registered, we encourage you to do so uh, before it sells out. Lastly, I want to say, and Chuck alluded to, it is televised, not only domestically, but it's televised in 120 countries live. And this effectively will be a pretty good commercial for the beautiful city of San Diego. So without further ado, I will turn it back to Chuck. Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks, Rob. Sorry about the, uh, the mic difficulty there, everybody. Um, this year's IT World Triathlon Series placed in San Diego alongside such iconic international cities as Sydney, Madrid, Lausanne, Hamburg, Stockholm, Yokohama, and Auckland. Uh, so before we go to Matt, we have uh, another video which previews the 2012 IT Series.
share with us the athlete's perspective on this event? Uh, hello? Okay. Uh, as you can tell from the video, uh, I've seen that video a few times, but I look up at it. But uh, yeah, this it's real intense racing, and unfortunately, we got to travel all over the world to uh, uh, to get there. And but to, to have that race, to have this level race in San Diego and just in the U.S. is amazing. Uh, I fly over 100,000 miles a year just to get to races and training locations um, all, all over the world. Um, but to have it in San Diego and um, the continent in the U.S. is um, it's not only just convenient and real nice, but it means, it means a lot. Uh, having our uh, second and final Olympic qualifier uh, on home soil is, is amazing. And um, over the years, I, I talked to some of my, my friends and, and colleagues, and I was like, where would be the best place to have one of these races? And uh, yeah, DC was okay, but uh, I was always like, you know, if we could have it on, on the West Coast, I think San Diego would, would be the best. Either San Diego or San Francisco. Um, San Diego it is. And uh, all I can say is uh, thanks, guys, for, for getting in here. And uh, in another regard, um, I guess it's about time that we have another another big one here. Um, and I hope I hope we can have this race here for uh, years to come. Uh, like uh, I said before, it's the birthplace of, of triathlon. And uh, to have to have a race of this magnitude and level here in San Diego and in the U.S. is is huge. So uh, yeah, thanks thanks for for getting in here, and uh, we'll uh, we'll do our best as athletes on on race day to, to put on a great show. So thanks a lot for having me. Uh, today, USA Triathlon is also pleased to announce its official U.S. national team in Olympic uniform, uh, produced by Tier Sport, uh, right here in Southern California. Um, Matt, you're sponsored by Tier, and maybe just talk a little bit about our, our new uniform. Um, yeah, so now we're flying the Stars and Stripes on our uniform. Uh, it's, it's kind of the, the same uniform that we, we wore in the years past. But now we have the stars and stripes on, on our rib cages, and uh, that's just really cool. Uh, Great Britain had their uh, the Union Jack on their rib cages the last few years, and now we get uh, gold glory, so um, it's a little bit better. Um, I love it. Great, great. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Um, once again, we'd like to thank Al and his team at the San Diego Sports Commission. Uh, for helping make this uh, event possible and all this invaluable assistance and, and giving us this space today for the press conference. So appreciate that. Al, maybe you can speak to uh, the San Diego perspective. Sure. Uh, first of all, this is probably the closest I'll get to ever competing the track. It's sitting there with you guys at the press conference. And, and I'm awful glad with this was you got on a bit more one of those things. <laughs> uh, but about a year and a half ago, uh, we were approached by U.S. Triathlon and Rob and his team and asked if we would be interested in, in being a participant in the, in the bid process to try and secure the World Series event here in San Diego. And one of the things that we've established as one of our goals with the Sports Commission as we've grown and changed over the last few years is to try and reposition San Diego as an active participant in lifestyle sports and be a major participant in world-class sports, particularly using the beach area and Mission Beach and the Pacific Beach and La Jolla so that we can to show off kind of the iconic views of San Diego. And when the team came out, and the, te the television team came out from Germany, uh, we worked through a number of options for courses, and we began to work with the city and the planning groups, and ultimately we got a course uh, committed that we're very, very excited about. It's going to include the boardwalk, and it's going to include Mission Beach, and it's going to include La Jolla. And it's a great race for the competitors, not only for the the Olympians and the people competing for the for the U.S. slots for the Olympics, but it's a great opportunity for people all over the, 
the country who want to compete in a race as an age group racer to come to San Diego. Uh, now, the only other thing that we want to do is, is put on a great show, so we're asking you to come out, support the race, uh, be part of it, come to the expo, come to the, all the enthusiasm and excitement that we're going to have staged around the event, and, and make sure you get more runners. I'd love to have the media guys come out. You know, we could do a little mini race if you guys need it shorter. We could figure something out. But we'd love to get the media guys out there, and maybe someday we can convince uh, Scott to do kind of an old-timers event, too. We're real glad to be partnered with U.S. Triathlon Lingadair and, and the runners and the, and the great athletes like Matt and, and the young ladies that I saw in the London course when I went over and visited. And it, it truly is, a, is an opportunity for San Diego to begin to, to re-imprint ourselves as a major player in this kind of event. So we're glad to be a participant and, and thank you so much for considering San Diego and, and making us a part of the team. Thank you very much, Al. Um, as, as Al indicated, what, what makes uh, the, our sport so unique is that amateurs have the opportunity to compete uh, as part of the same event as the pros. Um, with six weeks to go, we have uh, around 1,800, 1,800 uh, age group athletes already registered for the event. And before we go to Scott, we'd like to show uh, the age group course preview if we could. Um, the course is, is fantastic. I, I mean, 
All through my undergraduate career, I lived at Pacific Beach. Uh, I worked on Mission Bay. In fact, 1981, my boss uh, asked me to, rate, to put on a, a 10K race to raise some money uh, on almost the exact same run course that exists now. So the night before, with no permits, I realized that there were 60 people going to show up in the morning or in the back of my Honda 60 scooter after X beers and sasses. <laughs> I think that's a number up to mile one on the odometer. And so, needless to say, uh, the next day, several people broke the world record at that course. It's just <laughs> 9.2K. So there's, there's a lot of involvement. And um, I think, you know, the advantage for, for the age group athlete, not only as, as mentioned, but the fact, the fact that you see and can touch and feel and be on the same course as the best in the world, but that you are a part of history and you're part of, of a major metropolitan area, a beautiful place that takes an incredible amount of, of work and effort and a certain amount of, of global politics, if we can leave it at that, uh, to close the course and you know, to have that opportunity. And so uh, you know, people are going to ask, oh, can I get up Mount Soledad? Hey, it ain't that bad. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> So I'll leave it at that, and again, congrats, and thank you all for your support, because you guys are all part of this big effort. Sounds good, Scott. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, I guess we should call you Dr. Tingley now. Uh, congratulations on completing your, your PhD program as well. Um, okay, so now I'd like to open it up uh, to questions from the media. We do have two handheld microphones uh, in the back. So, if I could please ask that you just state your name and your affiliation before asking your question, that would be great. And just raise your hand when you have a question. So, any questions? Gordon? Yeah, um, is it, hello? Okay, go ahead. Um, can, can you guys talk, I, I'm from Inside Triathlon Magazine, can you guys talk about, um, I know there's different levels of racing. Oh. Hello? Of racing on the ITU? I mean, can you talk to just how high of a level this is and how important it is that we have this sort of race on American soil? Oh, sure. I mean, this is the, uh, the highest level of racing. The ITU is the development cycle to the Olympics. At the lower level, there's the Continental Cup races, of which there are two in this country, and there are World Cup races. There are World Triathlon Series races, as Chuck mentioned earlier. San Diego is joining the iconic cities. They race it around the world, London, Sydney, Madrid, Hamburg, to now San Diego. So it's the, there isn't, you know, arguably, you know, this is, at least on U.S. soil, the most competitive, the most important race um, of the year. And, you know, arguably it's going to be, because there's living spots on the line, you know, probably the most pressure-packed and intense race uh, in the world. Other countries will be here as well, vying for Olympic points. Each country can have a maximum of three participants, three men, three women. There's eight countries that will have three men, eight countries, three women. And so there are Olympic spots on the line for points. And the qualification cycle ends on June 1st. So this race is not only serving as are effectively as the Olympic trials, but for other countries as well, we'll be vying for points for the qualification. And in many cases, you know, this, you know, these athletes, they work three and four years through the whole cycle to qualify for the Olympics, and this gives them the most points on the World Triathlon Series level race. Sounds good. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Gordon? Okay, great, thanks. Any other questions? Thanks, uh, Chuck. Uh, congratulations for getting Scott to the Hall of Fame. And congratulations, Scott, for your doctorate. Very proud of you. Um, can you tell us something about who else is getting in the Hall of Fame on May 10th and what's planned for that evening? Well, I think you could probably do that even better than I could, Jim. So <laughs> this, this is your setup, Jim. Your, your, no, 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 please. You've got the microphone in your hand. I, there are six inductees. Um, so, yeah, actually, if you could give the details, that would be great. Uh, okay, there's six inductees uh, that get into the USAT Hall of Fame fourth class. Uh, Ethel Otterino, an 80-year-old, age, amazing age grouper. Uh, Sally Edwards, probably the foremost pioneer and straight-out feminist. 
in our sport. We really built a lot of what we've relied on and brought women to the forefront. Um, one of the most, the third guy is one of the most amazing people. He just, I, I'm awed by what he does every year. A guy named Bob Babbitt, who, he's like the elephant. Wherever you touch him, he seems a different person. He's a journalist. No, 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 no. He's a charity guy. No, no, no. He thinks of events. No, no, no. He's a humorist. Uh, really has so many aspects to him. And uh, he also, along with Scott, he's one of the only three time Hall of Fame members Iron Man Hall of Fame, Traffic Magazine Hall of Fame, and USAT Hall of Fame. Um, and then we get the three guys. We get uh, Scott Molina, probably the greatest uh, Olympic distance racer prior to the Olympics that there was. He won, uh, he won 75 U.S. triathlon series events. Basically unbeatable during the 1980s at that distance, at the Olympic distance. Uh, and you have Mark Allen. Seven Ironman, six Ironman, Scott. Seven. Uh, perhaps the greatest all around any distance triathlete from San Diego. Uh, went to college here, began his racing career here. And uh, my longtime neighbor and friend, Mr. Scott Tilley, who, besides winning two of the Ironman, uh, really kind of, in a way, epitomized what the sport was about the style, the flash, combined with uh, fantastic athletic ability. And we'll need to speak pretty well behind Mike too. So that's that's what we can anticipate on the Hall of Fame banquet on May 10th. And I'm, I'm very, very happy to just sit in the audience and clap. It's going to be great. Great. Thank you for that rundown, Jim. Appreciate it. Jim Curl, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is a member of the USA Triathlon Hall of Fame committee, he helps drive that whole uh, effort, and is uh, a member himself. Uh, as, as well. So, Jim, thank you. We, we do have a press release in the press kits with uh, all the information on that event. Again, tickets available. Jim will be selling them in the back. So, uh, after the press conference. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Anybody, uh, anybody else with a question? All right. A few questions. John, we good? Can I ask a question? Absolutely. I have a question for Don Nordmas. Yes. So, Don, you, you and amongst other journalists uh, have locally ha have been waving this flag of endurance sports uh, in, in a pretty tough reader market, you know, where we are, the city is participatory based, but we tend to love our, our teams, especially when they win. What will it take to, to have mainstream media in San Diego accept you know, these kinds of events on, on, a, on a more widespread basis. Is it you know, significant international events like this, uh, or is it simply a matter of time that facilitates growth and acceptance? Twofold. Oops, sorry. I think time is a factor, but also you need stars. Um, you know, stars with personalities. Um, unfortunately, you were a little bit before your time. You know, if, you, if, if there was a Scott Tenley at the top of the charts right now, you know, the, the sport, I'm not going to say it would be booming. Man, take your clothes off now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that it would be above, you know, football, baseball, basketball, but stars sell. I mean, let's face it, we like to read about celebrity and athletes. Um, so I think it will just take some time, and the more the sport can be on television, you know, the better, the broader exposure that it has, you know, is, is fantastic. Um, I think you have to be patient a little bit. I mean, how many, how long have we been reading and uh, hearing that, oh, soccer is the next greatest sport in America? Well, it's not quite there yet. So give us some stars, give us some personalities, and give us a little bit of time and better, you know, TV exposure. And, um, I mean, I'm still amazed that Iron Man Hawaii is not televised until like six weeks after the race. And it's, anyone who's been, been to that race before knows it is just captivating. And with all that there is on cable television right now, for that race not to be televised live to me is incredible. But I'm not a TV, uh, you know, businessman, so you know, I don't know what the numbers are in terms of advertising and so forth. But give us stars and give us some time and I think it'll be up there. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Don. All right. Anybody else? Okay. If not, I'd just like to remind everyone that we'll have our, our transition demo.
with our youth triathletes from the Triathlon Club of San Diego uh, right now, so please do stick around for that. Um, lunch is available. Uh, I don't see it over there yet, but uh, hopefully it will be over there in just a few minutes, as well as the muffins. Don't forget about the muffins. Um, thanks again to everyone, uh, to our speakers, and to everyone who attended today. Thank you very much. Uh, our, all our panelists will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews if you'd like to speak with them. Uh, John or myself or anybody else can, uh, can uh, facilitate that. And I'd like to thank John Martin, our manager of communications at USA Triathlon, for doing such a great job in putting this together. Thank you, John. Um, all right, there we go. Thank you.